Boys and girls, we're to the part of our missionary story. And it's so exciting. Somebody, do you remember what our missionary likes to be called? Bell. That's right. She likes to be called Bell. And she was going to receive some mail. And I love to get mail. How about you? But mail that was going to change her life. And Miss Lauren is ready to tell us. Are you sitting up straight? Are you paying attention? I can't wait to find out what happened. Miss Lauren, take it away. Last week we talked about Belle. She liked to be called Belle. And she um, grew up in a Christian home, but when she got to college, she knew that she did not personally put her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And growing up in a Christian home is not enough. The Bible says that you must personally Pray and ask Jesus Christ into your heart. You must personally believe that he died on the cross and that he was buried and that he rose again to pay for your sins. And you must personally pray and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. And that's exactly what Isabel did after she had been to college and she was so miserable. She realized that what she had known growing up was true and that she had to personally pray and put her trust in Jesus Christ. And that's what she did. And then after that, she was living a life kind of for herself and trying to find um, happiness and trying to find God's will for her life. And she was going to go to this guy to feel her head to tell her what she should be doing with her life. But instead, Mrs. Whipple said, God's plan for your life is in this book, didn't she? And she gave Isabel a Bible and Isabel began to study God's will for her life. And that's where we left off. We heard last week that she received something in the mail that changed her life. Dun, 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 dun. She received a letter in the mail. She was so excited. She opened it up, and it was a letter from Mrs. Whipple. Now, this time, Isabel was living back in Canada in her hometown, and Mrs. Whipple was in um, Seattle, Washington. And Isabel opened it up, and inside was money for a ferry ticket to return to Seattle, Washington to attend a camp. Now, this was a special Bible camp that many missionaries and people and pastors and Christian workers went to this camp to, to learn more about the Lord. And so Isabel was so excited to be able to spend the summer at this camp and learn a little bit more about the Lord. She was so excited about going, so one day she loaded the ferry and she was headed to Seattle, Washington to attend this Bible camp. And this Bible camp, something happened that changed her life. You see, one evening, Mr. Fraser, a man by the name of Mr. Fraser, stood up to speak. And Mr. Fraser was a missionary to China. And Mr. Fraser began talking about these people called the Li Su people. Can you say that? The Li Su people. L-I-S-U. The Li Su people. And Mr. Fraser began to explain to everybody about these Li Su people. And guess what? I happen to have a picture of a Li Su person from when I was in China. They dressed in such beautiful clothing. They were so unique. They're just little people. Look how short she is. They're precious, precious people. They're a minority people there in the Yunnan province. And oh, Mr. Fraser began to talk about these people and how these people lived on these, on these shacks on the side of the mountain on the western part of China. And oh, Isabel sat and listened so intently. And Mr. Fraser went on to explain that these people don't even have their own language. They don't speak the traditional Chinese language. They have their own language and it's not written into the language. So of course they had no access to the Bible. So Mr. Fraser had given his life to live in these shacks with these precious people on the side of these Chinese mountains to write the language of the Lisu language in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And oh, Mary's eyes began to fill with tears as he began to tell about these precious people who are very poor and, of course, had never had the opportunity to hear the gospel. And he sat there that night and he begged the people to pray and consider going to the western part of China and reaching these precious Lisu people. And as Isabel sat there, she knew that the Lord was calling her to be a missionary to these precious, precious people. And so the Lord continued to do a work on, it, on Isabel Kuhn's heart that week. And at the end of the summer, she returned back to Vancouver and she could not wait to tell her parents what the Lord had done in her heart. 
Do you think her parents were excited? After all, her dad was a pastor and her mom was the president of the missions board. <gasps> Isabel was so excited to tell them her exciting news. So she ran home after the summer and she said, Mom and Dad, the most wonderful thing happened to me while I was at the camp in, in Seattle. She said, I was so excited to hear Mr. Frederick tell us about these precious people in the country of China. They are called the Li Su people and these people know nothing about Jesus. And I believe that the Lord is calling me to be a missionary to China and to tell these people about Jesus. And to her surprise, her mother spewed out her morning tea that she was having and she said, I will never approve you to be a missionary to China. It would be a disgrace to know that people have to pass around an offering plate and give you money to go live over there. <gasps> Isabel was so surprised. And she was heartbroken. She thought her mom would rejoice in the fact that she wanted to be a missionary. But her mom at all, not at all, approved. She was so surprised. She went back to her room and, and, and Belle so often, if she didn't know what to do, she would pray and ask God for wisdom and she would open his word. Because after all, Mrs. Whipple told her that God's will will be found in the Bible. And let me challenge you, when you get to a hard spot in your life and you don't know the right thing to do, you see, Belle was in, she was torn in between two in honoring her father and mother. That's what the Bible tells us to do. But she also knew that the Lord had called her to this place. So what was she to do? So she went into her room and she spent time with the Lord and she talked to him through prayer and he talked to her through the Bible. And she went for a walk after she had spent some time with the Lord. And she looked around at the beautiful mountains in Vancouver, Canada. And she began, her mind began to wander to the mountains of China. And in her mind, it went back to, to, Mr., to, to James's lesson about these Lisu people. And she began to picture these precious Lisu people in these mountains just like they are in China. And she said, I cannot forget how much they need to know Jesus, I will go. And so that day she knew that the Lord was calling her. Again, she knew that this was the right thing that she was supposed to do. She was going to go to those mountains of China and tell those precious Lisa people about Jesus. So she knew that she had prepared to go to Bible college, and she knew there was a wonderful Bible college in the city of Chicago. Have you ever heard of Chicago? So she was going to go to the city of Chicago to learn some more about the Bible so she could travel to the country of China. Now, there were a couple big problems about her going to Chicago. First of all, she had no money for college. And secondly, she knew nobody there. So she began to pray about these things. And sure enough, a couple of days later, she got a phone call from her friend named Margie. And Margie was staying at the China Inland Mission in Vancouver. And Margie said, um, Isabel, will you please quickly get a bus and come see me? I have something to tell you. So Isabel quickly got on the bus and headed to China Inland Mission. This is a place where many people who were preparing to be a missionary would stay until they got the okay to go to China. So Mary had met Margie at this camp where she was called to be a missionary, and she knew that she was quickly headed to China. She was wondering why she wasn't there already. So Margie uh, had Isabel in and said, Isabel, I'm so happy you are here. As you know, I was planning on going to China, and the last thing I had to do was my medical exam, but they checked me out, and they said I had these severe headaches, and if I have them in America, they're just going to be intensified in China, and I cannot go to China. Oh, and Isabel was so sorry to hear this. She said, Margie, I'm so sorry to hear this. Margie said, no, it's no problem. I have a piece about it. But the Lord has provided all this money to be used for his work. And I know that you are praying about being a missionary to China, so I'm going to transfer this money into your account so you can go study at the Moody Bible Institute. Oh, what an answer to prayer this was. The Lord was providing for Belle. She was so excited, so now she had the money, and she went home, and she was rejoicing in the fact that she now had money to go to college. And she just was thinking, okay, I have money to pay for my tuition. I have money to pay for the classes, but I'm going to need to get a job there so I can pay for, like, clothes and, and pay for food and a place to stay. So she said, I just wish I had somebody to contact there to ask to see if I could get a job to make this extra money that I could live on. So she was looking through some old magazines on her table, and there was an article in a magazine that said, Mr. and Mrs. Page. Now, do you remember the Page family? This was the man who nine years ago put his hand on Belle's shoulder and said, 
I pray that one day you'll be a missionary to China. That Mr. Page's information was in this magazine, and it said, Mr. and Mrs. Page have moved to Chicago. You can reach them at blah, 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 and gave their address in Chicago. Now Belle had somebody, now Belle had somebody to contact in Chicago. So she sent a telegram to Mr. Uh, Mr. Page and said, Mr. Page, I'm planning on coming to Moody Bible Institute because the Lord has called me to be a missionary, just like you prayed nine years ago. Can you please tell me, can I work while I'm in school? And he sent back a telegram that said, yes, Belle, of course you can work while you are here. Please come. We will be happy to pick you up at the ferry station. So sure enough, Belle was off to Moody Bible Institute. So many wonderful things happened while she was there. She learned that, that her mother became, became at peace with the Lord about her going to China. Her mom gave her her, her okay, her approval for her to go through letter. And, and her, 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 her dad gave her the okay and she was ready to go. But then something else very special happened at Bible College. One day she was walking into the cafeteria and her eyes locked with this dreamy blue-eyed man named John. <gasps> oh, and that was just the beginning. She fell head over heels in love with John Coon. And they began to date and, and Mr. John asked her for her hand in marriage. He proposed to her and she said, well, John, I would love to marry you, but I know the Lord has called me specifically to the Li Su people. And he said, well, I'm going to be a missionary to China too. Let's see where the where China Inland Mission sends me. And if he, they send me to the Lisu people, we know it will be God's will for us to get married. And sure enough, John got the news that he was moving to the province of Yunnan. <gasps> that was the same province that I had the opportunity to live in. And he called Belle and he said, Belle, I got the approval to move to Yunnan where the Lisu people are. It is God's will for us to get married. So sure enough, John and Isabel were married, and they moved to the Li Su people in the western part of China. Now, next week, this is hilarious. Isabel, of course, took some nice things to decorate her new Chinese home in, and next week, we are going to read about what happens to Isabel's things. It's kind of funny. So tune in next week. Isabel and John have arrived in China. Now, you might think, how did they get there? Did they fly? No. Did they walk? Huh, of course not. They had to ride in a big boat across the huge open ocean all the way from Canada to the country of China. Can you imagine how long that would take? In an airplane, it takes 13 hours to get from America to China. So on a boat, it would take weeks and probably even months. But they finally arrived and God has important jobs for them to do. So next week, you tune in and see what happens to John and Isabel's adventure in China.